Good morning and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living Sarasota. Whether you're a member, a regular attendee, or you've just found us, we want you to know that we're here to support you in finding a personal relationship with the God of your understanding and in discovering what you already know. My name is Jim Grove, a licensed spiritual practitioner here at the center, and I greet you with Namaste. Namaste is Sanskrit and means the divinity in me recognizes and honors the divinity in you. Let's begin by affirming our vision and mission statements. The words can be seen on your screen. Please feel free to read aloud with me. First, our vision empowering spiritual growth as a loving, inclusive, worldwide community. And now our mission. We teach science of mind principles and other life-affirming spiritual truths. We explore, we learn, we grow, we connect, honoring all paths to God. We offer in-person and online weekly services, classes, workshops, affirmative prayer support, and other spiritual tools. We create opportunities for joyful social connection, community outreach, and service. And we celebrate the awakening of our innate spiritual magnificence. Now, as we prepare for our time of prayer and meditation, I invite you to relax and close your eyes. Take a deep cleansing breath and go within as Bob Teasdale sets the tone for us with a chant entitled, I am opening by Christy Snow. I am opening, I am opening, my heart is ready. I am opening, I am opening, my heart is ready to receive, I am opening, I am opening, my heart is ready to Few things are a greater comfort than deep and abiding trust in God. When I trust, I move more confidently through life. I feel the wind at my back, and I am made strong in the face of any adversity. In the past, I may have felt disappointed when I misplaced my trust. The things of the world are impermanent and always changing. Even people come and go. The truth of God as the one power and presence in the universe and as my life is everlasting, 
unchanged and unchanging through all the seasons of life. Even as I grow, evolve, and deepen in spiritual understanding, God is always my source to which I return again and again for inspiration. I let go of each of my concerns, releasing them to the perfection of the divine mind, the source of all possibility and infinite potential. I do this calmly and with confidence, believing that the love and power of God lead to the highest and best outcomes for everyone involved. Letting go is only the first step. Letting God means practicing patience while the perfect outcome reveals itself. I do not succumb to feelings of impatience or anxiety because I trust the best result is already on its way to me. My freedom to seek and discover lies in the awareness that I can always trust in God. I therefore let go and let God in peace and in trust. Grateful for this unchanging truth, I now release my word with complete confidence that all is well. And so it is. The message this morning by our spiritual leader, Reverend Karen Wolfson, is entitled The Agony and Ecstasy of Change. But before we hear from Reverend Karen, Bob is back to sing Let Go of the Shore by Karen Drucker. Thank you, Bob. Let go of the shore. Let go of the shore. That sounds so lovely, doesn't it? Well, 
until you're in the rushing water hanging on for dear life to the shoreline in fear of being swept away. <laughs> let go of the shore and let the water carry you? I don't think so. And yet, as the French author André Gide wrote, one doesn't discover new lands without consenting to lose sight of the shore. And then in that song comes the promise, you have all you need and it's all inside of you. So I want you to keep all of this in mind as we explore this month's new theme, change. The agony and ecstasy of change. Yep, that's right, the agony and the ecstasy of change. And to begin, I have a special announcement for you about an upcoming change. After many months of prayerful reflection, I've come to the realization that it's time for me to step aside and make room for new leadership of this Center for Spiritual Living Sarasota. And so, I will be retiring, or as I like to say, rewiring, as of October 31st. 20 years ago, 2002, with the vision and the generous support of a group of courageous individuals, I was privileged and honored to lead the founding of this center. Yep, this is our 20th anniversary. And this year also marks my 34th anniversary as a minister, having served in two centers prior to the founding of the Center for Spiritual Living Sarasota. As we are finally experiencing a sort of resurrection after these past years of the pandemic, it is so evident that we are poised on the threshold of countless exciting possibilities. And I know there's a perfect new leadership for this community as it moves into the next phase of its expression. In preparation for this time of change, our incredibly wonderful leadership team the Board of Trustees and supporting spiritual practitioners has been skillfully and thoughtfully working with me for the past several months with love and wisdom guided by spirit to create a smooth transition process. They'll be providing you with more information as amazing things unfold. So stay tuned for the adventure. And by the way, as an aside, you may hear thunder in the background. It just happens that as I'm recording this, there is a quite a thunderstorm going on. I don't know if maybe that's the universe giving us its applause. Let's take it as that. Anyway, do stay connected, stay tuned. Your presence makes all of this possible. And so as we do each Sunday, let's check in with each other. I continue to be so happy knowing you're out there. That means so much, and you know, I always wonder how you're doing. Know that I continue to affirm for you a year of vibrant wonder. And to you, our team of financial contributors, you too are a wonder. You are an absolutely essential part of all that makes it possible for us to share our message, our caring, and our connection. So thank you, thank you. So now, you can see why my theme for September is change, and more specifically, the agony and the ecstasy of change. Now, this is something I've spoken about many times, and yet I find I can use some reminders. Maybe you can too. So, spoiler alert, a lot of what I'm going to be sharing with you this month will be familiar to you. Things you've heard me say on more than one occasion. But here's the thing. Not only can I, as I embark on this significant change in my life, benefit from these reminders, but maybe you can too. And I realize that at this time, each of us is in a different place along the path of our life's journey. So that means we just might hear and apply these things in a different way. And by the way, as our Center for Spiritual Living Sarasota is about to experience significant change, the principles that work for us individually are the same for the group. So, about change. I asked Bob to sing that lovely chant, I am opening, as an invitation for us to be open to changes in our lives. But you know, the only one who, <laughs> who really welcomes change is a baby with a wet diaper. It's so ironic that 
Even though change is a natural part of life and growth, we often resist it. And although change always precedes new opportunities and experiences, more aliveness, excitement, freedom, greater confidence, and expression of all we're meant to be, still, we often resist it. Well, of course, change can be inconvenient, disruptive, uncomfortable, painful, and agonizing. There is agony and there is ecstasy. Now, in a way, life is a continuing series of beginnings that end and endings that lead to new beginnings that end. Well, you get the idea of the cycle. It's like a continuum of births and deaths. And if you find yourself dreading and resisting change, well, how about this? Change your ideas about change because it isn't change that's the enemy. The enemy, or the, the thing we dread about change, actually comes from the way we think about change and also from the way we think about ourselves in relationship to the change. These perspectives make all the difference. Now, you know, the Buddha taught everything is impermanent. And we think that impermanence makes us suffer, but Impermanence doesn't make us suffer. What causes our suffering is wanting things to be permanent when they are not. <laughs> now this is expressed beautifully in the ancient writings of the Bhagavad Gita. It says there are two demands within each of us, always. The demand of the ego for safety and comfort and the demand of the soul for our growth and evolution. And these conflict, conflicting demands play out by way of the ego mind saying no to the new because ego wants to find the perfect picture of life, money, safety, love, and then freeze it. This is its nature. And in contrast, the soul wants only our growth and development as continual movement toward the fullest possible experience of life. Now, this writing goes on to say, but there is deep within us a serene place that never changes. And our task is to become identified with that place of no change that is there within each of us. When we embrace this, it gives us the ground to stand on in the midst of the flow of ever-changing life. That place within, I'm going to say, is it's our very spiritual essence, our divine self the self that is infinite and eternal. Now, the Sof Sufi poet Rumi said it like this, When the heart weeps for what it has lost, the spirit laughs for what it has found. Now, another word for change could be create, because life is a continually creative process on every level. Nature is always creating, humans, uh, our bodies are always creating and recreating, and we as human beings, our ideas, our resourcefulness, our inventions, and more, all of it is continuously creating. So rather than fear or dread change, how about we celebrate what's being created? Now, Ernest Holmes, the architect of our philosophy, sums it up this way. Nature will not let us stay in one place too long. She'll let us stay just long enough to gather the experience necessary to the unfoldment and advancement of the soul. So this is the wise provision, he says, for should we stay here too long, we should become too set, too rigid, too inflexible. Nature demands the change in order that we may advance. So he says, when the change comes, we should welcome it with a smile on our lips and a song in our heart. I know it's not always that easy. I did mention the agony of change, didn't I? You know, much of that agony, of course, is because with change there is loss. And that loss can be so painful. Most profound, of course, is the loss of a loved one. But every change includes loss of some kind. Loss of the familiar, 
loss of the expected, even the loss of what's comfortable. You've heard this, what the cocoon experiences as a disaster, the butterfly experiences as a miracle, or you can fly, but the cocoon has to go. <laughs> loss, always leading to something else. Many years ago, I discovered a little book called How to Survive the Loss of a Love, and it was something I needed very much at that time. And it's a book about how we grieve all of our losses. The loss of youth, of beauty, of health, of our home, maybe when we move from one to another. Marriage, divorce, of a loved one, loss of a loved one, certainly. Loss of a job, retirement. Loss of what we thought our life would be like. Now, Author Gloria Karpinski rather dramatically expresses it like this. She says, Without warning, the reliable plot of your life script in which all the actors know their lines dissolves into an unfamiliar drama. Trying to lock all of that into permanence, <laughs> we might as well try to catch wind in a sieve. So, what are some of the ways that we can respond to change? Well, number one, recognize that when an agonizing change occurs, it's like a wound to our whole system, our mind, our body, our emotions. And acknowledge it. And know that a healing process is also beginning, just as with a physical injury. It is a process, and it's most likely gradual. Remember the five phases of grieving? Well, you know, they occur not only when we're grieving the death of a loved one, but actually whenever we go through any kind of loss, any kind of change. They are denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance, and of course they don't necessarily move in that order or even happen once and then they're done. It's a process. And the second thing to do in response to change, I'm suggesting, dance with change. Dance with the change. A few years ago, it occurred to me that change is a sort of a dance. Actually, it's the constant dance of life. So let's think about dancing with change. Dancing is really fun when we get into it all in. I mean, we wouldn't even consider getting out on the dance floor and then resisting the whole process. So it might be tentative at first, but instead of resisting the change, embrace it. Go all in. And another thing about dancing, we enjoy it most when we're flexible and not rigid. And the same is true of change. Darwin said survival is about those elements, those people most adaptable, most flexible to change. And dancing is about going with the rhythm, the beat that guides us. Haven't you noticed that when you start to feel the rhythm, your body starts to move with it, even if you don't know the steps? Well, when change shows up, we certainly don't know all the steps. But if we tune into our inner guidance, we can go with it and let, us, let it lead us through the process. Now, when we're dancing, maybe the music is a waltz. So, of course, you're dancing to the music playing. I mean, it wouldn't make sense to dancing with our waltzing partner to insist on dancing a salsa. Uh, that would result in clumsiness, stepping on toes, and, well, a lot of chaos. And have you noticed dancing is not something to be rushed? Slow dancing or fast it has its own pace and rhythm. And with change, the process, though often messy and agonizing, can't be rushed. And there are no shortcuts. Okay, I think you get the idea. Dancing with change. I'm going to wrap this up with a personal story uh, as an invitation to dance with change, whether it's agonizing or ecstatic. 
Several years ago, my husband Irwin and I were attending the annual conference of the Centers for Spiritual Living. It was held at the beautiful Asilomar Conference Grounds on the shore of the Pacific Ocean near Monterey, California. The last night of the conference featured a dinner and a dance. Well, after dinner, Irwin decided to go back to our cabin, but I decided to go and enjoy the music at the dance. Now, the band was terrific, and I was so enjoying the music. I thought, well, it would be fun to get out there and dance, but I think I'll call it a night after one more song. Just at that moment, the band started to play a tango. And folks, that was my cue to be on my way. This girl did not know how to do the tango. But suddenly, from across the dance floor, here came one of my colleagues and dear friends, a former ministerial classmate. Now he is the Reverend Dr. David Leonard. Well, David had been a dancer in theater before becoming a minister. And he was always a dancer, always just bursting with joy and loving energy. And he ran across the floor, grabbed my hand and said, come on, Karen, let's tango. No, oh, you know, I protested. Come on, he was a dancer, and I didn't have a clue about how to tango. And I admit I did not want to embarrass myself amidst all those people. But he was insistent, and you couldn't, you couldn't refuse David after a while. He was insistent, and so was the music. So before you know it, we were out there on the dance floor and having a blast. All I could do was follow the music and David's fabulous, joyful, energetic lead with abandon. I don't know if we were actually doing the tango, but we were dancing our hearts out in pure joy and fun. What an experience of exhilaration. A sense of unbridled aliveness and spontaneity. Wow. <laughs> Trust in the process. I even discovered some moves I didn't know I had. Just like the changes in life, there was some agony. Oh, I know it was just a little bit that was my own stuff, but nonetheless. It was something new and unfamiliar to me, and I was more than reluctant. Yes, even afraid of being embarrassed by my lack of dance skill. But in addition to ultimately having the time of my life, I discovered some new things about myself. And that is one of the many gifts of change we find inner resources we didn't even know we had. And with that tango experience, I had a life-changing, ecstatic experience I will always treasure. Of course, I know that so many of the changes we encounter in life are incredibly huge and overwhelmingly agonizing. And this is not to trivialize those experiences. But when change comes, somehow, perhaps after some painful kicking and screaming, very hesitantly, we can gradually dance with those changes. Or as in the song Bob is going to sing, it's, it's by Melissa Felipe about that kicking and screaming. The words say, I get to think and I can handle any old change. Then something new shows up and suddenly life gets rearranged. Suddenly I'm struggling and feeling strange as I go, kicking and screaming down the road to transformation. <laughs> After that, what can I say? Have yourself a transformative week of dancing with change. I used to disown myself, I didn't know I was frightened I wouldn't let myself get angry, it wasn't enlightened and Then my friend told me to really be free I've got to be embracing every part of me So even though sometimes it feels like pulling teeth My higher 
myself and my dog side Giving me my information I'm learning to love every part of myself Even parts I've hidden on the highest shelf I'm kicking and screaming down the path of transformation I like to think of myself as wise, full of insight so rare I think I really go with the flow and I know I will stay there I get to thinking I could handle any old change Then something new shows up and life gets rearranged Then suddenly I'm struggling and feeling so strange I go kicking and screaming down the path of transformation My higher self and my dark side giving me my information I'm learning to love every part of myself Even parts I've hidden on the highest shelf I'm kicking and screaming down the path of transformation Sometimes it's a hard road This working to become enlightened Can't say it always makes me rejoice but looking at the options, it's still my choice It's my choice I go kicking and screaming down a path of transformation My higher self and my dark side giving me my information I'm learning to love every part of myself Even parts I've hidden on the highest shelf I'm kicking and screaming down the path of transformation Yes, I'm kicking and screaming down the path of transformation I go kicking and screaming down the path transformation Thank you, Bob, for that rousing musical finish to Reverend Karen's poignant message about change. Now, as we move into our time of offering, I want you to know that we're so grateful for your generous financial support of this center that allows us to support you in so many ways. There are three easy ways to share your offering. On your screen, you'll see our website, which is www.cslsarasota.com, where you can choose a couple of options. You can select the Donate button, which allows you to contribute via PayPal or by credit card, or you can mail a check to our address. You can also set up automatic contributions through your own online banking. And now I invite you to place your hand over your heart as you reflect on your gift, blessing it as you share it, and know this with me. My gift goes forth to heal, to bless, and to prosper, and the divine flow returns it to me multiplied abundantly. Now, please join me in our offering affirmation on your screen. I give thanks that I may share of my good, my love, and my support. Thank you so much. If you'd like prayer support, I'd like to draw your attention to the green prayer request button. We invite you to use this feature to send us your request. Our five licensed spiritual practitioners, Kathleen Frankert, Ron Frost, Nicole Leeds, Sean Scanlon, and me, are available to know and affirm spiritual truth with and for you in whatever challenge you may be experiencing. We're also available for one-hour spiritual coaching sessions by appointment. For more information, check our website under the staff link at the left side of the screen and then select Practitioners. Here on our website, you can also sign up to receive our weekly email newsletter. Please also check out our Facebook page for posts about upcoming events. I have one announcement for you this morning. 
Our spiritual living circle meets via Zoom every Wednesday evening for one hour from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern Time to discuss an article from the current month's Science of Mind magazine. This week, we'll be discussing the article by Ernest Holmes in the September issue entitled The Secrets of Success. This is a wonderful opportunity for spiritual development and social connection with other like-minded individuals. If you'd like to participate, please email me at the address shown on your screen, and I'll send you the Zoom link, article, and discussion guide. Now, as we conclude this sacred time together, let us move forward into the week ahead, welcoming those invitations from spirit to see change as opportunities for growth. I invite you to listen or join in singing our closing song, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Thank you for being with us and have a great week, everyone. Let there be peace on